guess who's back with the bang? It's your old favorite lawn chair, Lawn Chair 14, making a grand return, and it's better than ever. Just a few days ago, they rolled out their biggest update yet, and here's everything you need to know. First off, they're still in their first early beta version, so if you do download this update, just keep in mind that you could experience a number of bugs, broken features, and even some crashes. So just be warned. Plus, this latest update is not on the Play Store, but I'll leave some links right below the like button to download it for free. Anyways, just like the previous versions, it remains based on Android AOSP Launcher 3, and now follows the latest Android 14 layout. So it looks and feels extremely similar to the latest Pixel Launcher version found on the Pixel 8 Pro. It has the same Google search bar, at a glance widget, Google Discover panel, and similar widgets page, and pop-up menu. It's currently the best launcher you can download to get as close to the original latest Google Pixel Launcher version as possible. It also comes with some fantastic new additions. It now fully supports global searching within the app drawer without needing an extra app. So just like on Samsung or Google phones, you can search for extra things like your contacts, settings, files, the web, and more. It works relatively well, I just wish that the search interface looked a lot more like the Pixels, but luckily the developers are planning to do this in the future. My only concern was that the default search engine they chose to use in the app drawer is called StartPage. It's a private search engine that claims to not collect any data while still providing Google-like results. But I'm not really sure how trustworthy they are since they're not really open source. Plus what also concerned me was that the Launcher team stated on their blog that they now have a revenue sharing agreement with them. After reading that, my first thoughts were whether or not they would start putting ads within the search engine or start promoting things. So I asked the team directly and they said that they would never put ads in launch air and instead that their agreement with start page is that by setting a start page as the default search engine, the developers get a bit of revenue from the ads in the search results. Those ads are the same as those at the top of some Google searches. So it just seems like a fair way to earn revenue without asking their user for money since they don't have any in-app purchases or subscriptions. They even let you disable start page by going into the lawn chair settings, going into drawer search, and toggling off web suggestions via start page. The search bar on the home screen is a completely different story though. By default, it launches Google search, but you can change the search provider to anything else, including DuckDuckGo, Bing, the regular app search, YouTube, GitHub, and more. You can even use the Pixel Search app from the Play Store to get the actual Pixel Search UI. That's exactly what I did, and it works great. To do this, you go into the Launcher Settings, Dock, and then Search Provider. Launcher 14 also expanded support for the at a glance widget. Just like before, you can have it show your battery status, date, time, weather, and now playing. However, with version 14, you can change the provider to some other alternatives. You can use the stock Google one with the updated UI, which kind of looks weird. Use a basic Google search bar. Or the best route is to use Smart Spacer, an app that I reviewed a while back, which replicates the at a glance widget and modifies it to make it 100 times better. For example, it now lets me keep track of the number of subscribers I have on YouTube, the battery percentage of any of my connected devices, including my smartwatch or headphones, see a countdown for any specific date or event that I'm looking forward to, keep track of any of my favorite stocks or cryptocurrencies, see the current song that I'm playing in the background, get any package updates and a lot more. Plus within SmartSpace, you can install even more plugins, including ones for Uber, Amazon, Yahoo Sports, Tasker, and more. The only thing to keep in mind is that you will need to enable it with the Shizuku app. Luckily, I made a video showing off how to do just that, which I'll leave within the YouTube cards. Now, much like how a well-designed Android launcher streamlines your smartphone's interface, a hyper-secure password manager like Keeper Security, this video's sponsor, simplifies managing your online accounts and sensitive data and lets you log into your accounts effortlessly. Especially now, since Keeper Security supports both traditional passwords and now pass keys, letting you log into your accounts without needing to type anything in. You just use your phone's fingerprint sensor or face unlock method to confirm that it's you. Plus they're even more secure against phishing attacks since they use MFA. On top of this, you usually have to save pass keys locally on your phone, meaning you can only use them on that device. But when you create them with Keeper, you can use them across any of your devices. 
What I also love is that you can store just about anything within Keeper, including credit cards, licenses, passports, or any other important file. Plus, if any of your accounts appear in a website breach, Keeper will notify you immediately with its breach watch service so that you can take action before a cyber criminal attacks. So start securing and making it easier to log into your online accounts with Keeper Security and use the promo code HOWTOMEN to get 50% off both personal and family plans. I'll leave the link at the top of the description. Back to the launcher, probably the best improvement is that unlike some other third-party launchers, Launcher 14 is now equipped with the Gesture Nav Contract API. This API amplifies the smoothness of animations when you open or close apps, or you hop into the Recents page while using the Gesture Nav Bar. In other words, it makes the animations when using the Gesture Nav Bar a lot less janky. You can even see the windows shrink and animate towards their respective icons on the home screen. It's not as perfect as a stock launcher, but it's definitely an improvement. And unfortunately, not every device will support this feature, but I did try it out on some popular phones like the Pixel 8 Pro, Nothing Phone 1, and Galaxy S24 Ultra, and they all appear to receive smoother animations. However, if you're rooted, you can instead use Quick Switch, because Launcher 14 now supports it, or at least it tries to. If you're not sure what this is, it's basically a Magis module that gives third-party launchers full access to the recent APIs so that you can have smooth animations when using the gesture navigation bar. It removes all the awkward jump cuts and any lag. But as of now, getting it to run with Lawn Chair 14 is a bit tough. Most people, including myself, had trouble getting it to work, so it's definitely a work in progress. But it's not impossible, and for some rooted devices, you can get it running. And since I mentioned rooting, if you give Lawn Chair 14 root access, you'll unlock some extra hidden features. For example, you get app suggestions on the dock, which lets you easily access your most used apps based on your routines. It's an exclusive feature only found on the Google Pixels, but somehow the Launcher team managed to bring it over to their launcher so that anyone who is rooted can try it out. On top of that, you can supposedly modify the recents page, like adding extra actions to it, customizing the corner radius, and even adding a taskbar, but I haven't been able to get it to work on any of my rooted devices, so that also seems to be a work in progress. Launcher 14 also comes with many new theming features that I'm sure most of you will appreciate. Starting with the icons, you can now create custom icon shapes for all of your installed apps. It's something that I haven't seen any other launcher do, and it works really well. You can just move the sliders to cut into the corners of the icon, and you can choose different corner shapes to create an abstract shape. Once you apply it, every icon will get themed, and they actually don't look that bad. On top of that, they also have a ton of other icon shapes that you can use. Another awesome change is that Launcher 14 shows you your system's themed icons within your stock launcher whenever you enable themed icons within the settings, but don't choose any icon pack. For example, on my Nothing Phone 1, I can see the same monochrome icons, and on my Pixel 8 Pro, I can bring over those color adaptive themed icons. They work the same way, matching the colors of my wallpaper, following the system's dark theme, and even auto-generating for any unthemed apps. However, if you prefer using an icon pack that themes your icons to match your wallpaper, like Lonnie icons or any other pack from the Play Store, you still have that option. What's also cool is that you can now make any themed icons transparent so that they don't have any background. It's found within the settings, under general, and then a toggle called transparent themed icons. It looks pretty clean. You can also still change the fonts, and now with Launcher 14, you can choose different fonts for different headings and body types found throughout the launcher. It gives you more freedom if you like your menus and text to look a certain way. There are also a ton of other tiny extra tweaks for instance, you can now hide the dock, which is excellent for anyone who uses KLWP Live wallpapers. You can add or remove some padding at the bottom of the dock. You can change the text color on the home screen from light to dark if the default choice is incorrect. You can also change the home screen's feed provider. So if you have SmartSpacer installed, you can use their expanded panel as your feed so that instead of getting article recommendations, you can see any of your widgets and important data. For widgets, you can now remove size constraints and even force them to be resized if they can't by default. You can customize the pop-up menu on the home screen by adding extra buttons that are actually useful. 
You can have the app drawer remember your last position when you open it. Customize the folders even further, including changing the icon background color, opacity, and labels. And within the experimental features, you can increase the max home screen grid size from 10 by 10 to 20 by 20, which is insane. And that's everything that's new within Lawn Chair 14. Of course, it's still got all the previous features that came with Lawn Chair 12, including mono theming, where the colors of your lawn chair match your chosen wallpaper, gesture support to launch specific actions, backup and restore, and a lot of tinier customization options. Again, being that this update is still in its early beta stages, I'm sure that we'll see even more features in the future and a lot less bugs. On their blog, they even state that they're planning to release extra features like multiple icon supports, a responsive settings user interface, the option to remove the app drawer, better color customization, and drawer tabs. Either way, if you'd like to see a review of Nova Launcher's newest and biggest update, be sure to tap this video right here. Thanks for sticking to the end. Drop your thumbs up if you like this video style, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!